These are the suggested solutions from last year's SAC. So your task is to mark last year's SAC based on this recording and also an email of the solutions and then complete a practice SAC review or evaluation uh, which will hopefully allow you to pinpoint areas of strengths for you to uh, work with and also areas of weakness for you to be able to target some extra revision in the lead up to this SAC. So we'll skip through to the questions. Question one, what is the population group targeted by this intervention? It's adults at risk of type two diabetes. Identify two benefits for someone of this target group participating in the intervention. We could look up here and through the Live for Life participants work towards reaching any of the following goals. So any one of those would have satisfied. Just going back to question one, we've got specifically designed for people with or at risk of type two diabetes. A little bit further down, we also have a program target. So maybe suitable for adults of all ages, including people with or at risk of type two diabetes. Use the below template to identify if the intervention addresses the four levels of the social ecological model, and if so, how. So this task required the use of the above information, and all you needed to do was go down from the individual environment, whether it be social environment, physical environment, and then policy, and identify do any of these actually take place. And if so, then you can tick the bottom one as well. At least one factor above has been addressed. If all of these bottom boxes have been ticked, identifying that yes, there's an individual factor, a social, an environment, and a policy, then yes, the intervention has addressed each one of those levels. D was justify where you selected. So an example here, individual, increase self-efficacy. Example, three easy steps, which is dot point one. Social, what do participants get out of it? Dot point two, working as a team. Environment, will they now get access to gym equipment that they previously wouldn't have? And policy, there's a funding grant from the government. So that's just one example of each of the columns there. Obviously, you could provide an example um, of other information in the document as well, as long as it uh, was specific to one of these here that you had ticked. Explain why the social ecological framework is an effective way to critique an intervention strategy. It allows us to quickly check to see that all four levels of influence have been addressed. If they have, then it is more likely to be successful. So each level supports the other. And then there's just an example there, again, of a ride to school policy. Question two. All participants in this intervention had to have an initial consultation with the doctor. Adults who are obese have a greater risk of having or developing type 2 diabetes. With respect to physical activity, what advice would the doctors give their obese patients in order for them to be able to work towards meeting the National Physical Activity Guidelines? So the first important thing to note is that it says physical activity, which means we can't refer to sedentary information. It has to do with physical activity. So do more physical activity than they're currently doing. They should try and get to 60 minutes a day. And when they have lost their weight, then they should be doing a minimum of 90 minutes per day. 
list three processes of change that are appropriate to such an individual. The process of change questionnaire is table 2.2 from our textbook on page 46 and 47. So if we look at it from a cognitive perspective, talking with GP until feeling comfortable to start, cognitive, goal setting with instructor, cognitive demystifying the gym environment. So each one of these ways refers to the individual cognitive, meaning that we're changing their knowledge. Part A um, here is looking at pre-intervention information. So by having the patients complete this survey, what were the doctors trying to assess? So it's information beforehand. They're looking at frequency of activity, duration of activity, percent meeting frequency, percent meeting duration, and percent meeting the National Physical Activity Guidelines. So that's what they're measuring. Okay? But it asks what were they trying to assess. So they're trying to assess the current physical activity level. They're trying to work out what type of intervention or process of change that would be most appropriate. So this is looking at what is the current physical activity level and based on that, what type of intervention would be appropriate. What is one advantage and one disadvantage of this method of data collection? Well, an advantage we're able to assess across multiple domains, so leisure, household, transport, occupation. Disadvantage is that there is a social desirability bias, um, meaning that because they're being asked regarding physical activity, they're more likely to give an indication that they're doing more than what they currently are because they believe that that is the better response or deemed to be a better response. Also with age, the older adults that were participating in this perhaps um, cognitively wouldn't have been able to recall appropriately uh, to complete the survey satisfactory, satisfactorily. C. As part of the Lift for Life program, participants when they started are provided with the physical activity diary or journal. Explain the difference between recall instruments and diaries or logs. So recall instruments are generally used as a form of a survey. The respondents have to remember physical activity they did in the last week or month or year. Recall instruments generally also the information is for someone else. Whereas a diary or log which is used every day to record the physical activity. And more often than not the diary or log is actually used for the individual. Question three is looking at, again, same questions as the pre-intervention survey. So this is now post-survey. This is looking at the percentage of participants and weight loss. What are the three, or what are three of the key objectives of this intervention? So again, if we look at the information previously in the initial information, we'll find that increased participation in physical activity, try and meet national physical activity guidelines, weight loss, increased self-efficacy for physical activity, decreased risk of type 2 diabetes, and increase the knowledge and benefits of physical activity, risks, consequences of inactivity. Question 4. Was the intervention successful? explain using available data. If you did not use data, that immediately means you are unable to get full marks. You must use data. So was the intervention successful? Yes. Now, both frequency and duration 
increased after the intervention. Again, use the data. So what percentages were they before? What percentages were they after? And also the percent meeting frequency and duration requirements and the National Physical Activity Guidelines increased. Again, use data, indicate what the percentages were beforehand and what the percentages were afterwards. B. If so, what was it about the intervention that allowed it to be successful? If not, explain what it was about the intervention that did not allow it to be. So for a start, it followed the social ecological model and had strategies that targeted each level of influence, so individual, social, environmental, and policy. This increases the chance of success because the participants have a greater understanding or self-efficacy can put this into place more readily because of social support, appropriate facilities, and also the support of policy. So moving on to the second part of the SAC. So questions are no longer um, with respect to lifting for life. Table one, physical activity data, minutes of moderate to vigorous intensity physical activity. We have three different people, Oscar, Charlie, and Brendan. Analyze the data provided in the table above and discuss which of Oscar's colleagues is likely to work with him in the field and who is more likely to work in the company's office. So Brendan is in the field refer to data. So what we're looking at there is that Brendan is spending a greater number of minutes undertaking moderate to vigorous physical activity. Charlie is in the office due to decreased, or sorry, a smaller number of minutes compared to Brendan. But again, you must use data. Discuss two policies that a workplace could introduce to help increase physical activity. So we could subsidise either gym memberships or public transport fares. We could have posters by the stairs indicating that it's best practice to use the stairs as opposed to a lift. We could have ride to work days, meetings where we need to walk. So we can do a walk and talk meeting, or maybe we walk to a venue for a meeting. Team sports with colleagues, so something like corporate games of a lunchtime. Walking groups of a lunchtime. We could have the global corporate challenge, so trying to make 10,000 steps. We can have printers not next to desks, so we have a print room that people have to walk to to be able to get to uh, the work that they print or when they want to photocopy. We've got to be careful and this came up in the review from last year's end of year exam. We can't put policies into place that we cannot support. A workplace cannot mandate that everyone must walk at lunchtime. Okay? They can't mandate that. But they can mandate that next to stairs is information on the benefit of walking upstairs as opposed to lifts. What must the manager consider before the implementation of policies? They need to look at all levels of influence. Okay, before introducing policy, they must consider the environment. So facilities, showers, bike racks, stairs in working order, etc. If you can't make sure that the policy that you're going to put forward can be supported in an individual, social or environmental way, then it's not likely to be as effective. The other thing they need to look at is the ability to influence the individual. So what cognitive changes can they make with respect to changing their knowledge base? List three advantages of increased physical activity in the workplace. We decrease absenteeism, we increase employer morale, reduce staff turnover, increase productivity, 
And because of that, we also decrease the cost of training new staff, lost productivity, and paying for temp and sick leave at the same time. What role does the government play in attempting to increase population levels of physical activity? The government is responsible for monitoring, promoting physical activity and health behaviours. Um, therefore, they provide money to evaluate, to research uh, programs that promote physical activity. On page 73 of the text, there are also some other examples of what the government does. And also, government is the ones responsible for writing government policy on physical activity, such as the National Physical Activity Guidelines. What are two perceived barriers that people have to physical activity? Lack of time, or conflict of interest, money, cost, lack of confidence or skill, so that could be lack of um, self-efficacy, uh, access to childcare, they may already do enough physical activity, so that would be more what uh, perceived barriers that people may have to do more physical activity. They could be injured, it could simply be that they have a decreased uh, mobility and functioning level than they previously did. So some of those uh, would have required a slightly more descriptive response than just injury, for example.